Commissioner for Counterterrorism and the AFP. Uh, today we can com com confirm that a 22-year-old woman living in South Australia has been arrested and charged with a terrorism offence, that being a member of a terrorist organisation, the Islamic State. If found guilty, she faces the prospect of up to 10 years in prison. Uh, members of the South Australian JCTT, the Joint Counterterrorism Team, uh, commenced an investigation last year in relation to this person, uh, which led to the search warrants on a property in Adelaide's western suburbs today and the subsequent arrest. Uh, we'll allege a number of issues in relation to this incident. We'll allege that in court that she cultivated relationships with Islamic State members. We'll also allege that she pledged her allegiance to the Islamic, to, to the Islamic State. The charges we've led today against this person are serious and insignificant and should be not, not underestimated. I think, however, it's important to note that there's no current threat in, in South Australia or Australia in relation to this incident. And to reiterate, again, this, this incident is not linked to the activity that had occurred in Manchester overnight. It's concerning that so many young people remain susceptible to extremist ideologies and are willing to engage in criminal activity that attract significant penalties. The arrest today highlights the global nature of terrorism and the importance of community vigilance. We rely on the community to report any information to authorities so that we can continue to do our work in this space. The actions today are a result of smart policing. Uh, many long hours, dedicated investigators and detectives from South Australia Police and AFP uh, great assistance from our, our intelligence agencies, ASIO, that have resulted in what we believe is a really great result for, for, for the community in South Australia, and making that community in South Australia safer and the Australian community safer. Deputy, I'll pass to you. Thanks, Assistant Commissioner. Um, I reiterate what's just been said about members of South, the South Australian Joint Counterterrorism Team comprising of officers from South Australia Police, the AFP and ASIO made an arrest this morning of a 22-year-old woman residing in the western suburbs of Adelaide. I would like to emphasise again that this, um, the individual has been charged with membership of a declared terrorism organisation, not specifically planning any attack. There is no known ongoing threat to the community of South Australia at this time. The South Australia Police will continue to work closely with our partner agencies to ensure the safety of the public including those from a diverse range of backgrounds and religious faiths. I'd like to remind the community that police will not tolerate acts of violence or threats targeting any specific group within our community. I can reassure the South Australian community that this investigation has been thorough and has been fully supported by all participating agencies. I wish to reinforce the comments of Assistant Commissioner McCartney from the AFP that there is no known link to what has occurred in Manchester with this person today. The South Australia Police continue to work closely with the private sector and other government organisations to examine and implement a raft of strategies aimed at minimising any risk to the community and a strong prevention focus. We are also vigilant in reviewing our environment constantly, which includes updating information provided to the public and reassuring and introducing new measures to produce the, reduce the potential for any further harm. I'd also like to point out, now more than ever, now more than ever, it is important for the community and police to continue to work together to promote an inclusive and supportive society. We, continue, we need people in the community to continue to speak out about the error of, of supporting extreme views. The priority for law enforcement is to ensure the safety of the community and we encourage people to speak out if they have any concerns. Any person who is concerned that a family member is radicalising or is vulnerable to extremism should contact the National Security Hotline on 1800 123 400. In Australia and around the world what we are seeing is that the age of people radicalised is getting younger with online grooming tactics similar to those used by sexual predators. Families and friends are vitally important for those who are vulnerable. I can't emphasise that social cohesion and co inclusiveness in our society is critical in driving counter-narrative to the extremist ideology. You were talking about the, uh, the age here, and just how it's all about being so young. How, how old is this person? 22 years of age. Are any of her family members being investigated? The matter is still under investigation locally. 
One person has been arrested. Deputy, between observing her late last year, it seems in this world there's very little between someone who cultivates a relationship with IS and someone who goes rogue. How sure were you that over the period you've had her under observation, she wasn't going to do something like we've seen overnight? This investigation has been ongoing. It's been very thorough. We've made constant risk assessments throughout the investigation and we are comfortable this was the right time to make the arrest. Had there been any risk to the community, that decision would have been taken at, the, at a point in time if there was a risk to the community, which I emphasise there wasn't and there's, there's still no ongoing risk from this arrest. Was she planning to travel anywhere, to your knowledge? As the matter is still before the court, um, I won't go into the details in terms of the investigation. Is she appearing in, in the Adelaide Magistrates Court this afternoon? And my understanding is that she's likely to appear in the court either this afternoon or tomorrow morning. What can you tell us about her country of origin, how long she's been in uh, Australia? Um, the person um, who's been arrested is an Australian citizen and I'll hand over to the AFP to talk about um, issues of country of origin. Thank you, Deputy. Yeah, the, the person, the 22-year-old arrested, is an Australian citizen. Uh, she arrived in, in Australia when she was uh, when she was 14. Uh, she has uh, is of Somali origin. But I think the important point to make in this case: we're not targeting race, we're not targeting ideologies, we're targeting criminality in relation to these sorts of incidents. We talked about radicalisation, that, that what has happened through religion. Is she a Muslim? Uh, she is a Muslim. Yeah. And, and is she a member of a local mosque? Or... Well, listen, the, the matter is before court. What, what we'll allege in relation to, to her activities, the majority of her activities were online. And I, I, I take the point that the deputies raised. I think it's concerning that particularly young people, uh, uh, in terms of the online activities of predators, whether it be sexual offences or, or kind of terrorism, are susceptible to this sort of activity. So, so she's recruited um, in the online environment rather than in a mosque situation about a, a Again, the, the matter is before court, but what we can say, evidence that we'll leave before court is there was, there was online activity in terms of her engaging with what we would call CT suspects around the world. How did she become, uh, become to be on your radar? What, what was it that alerted you to, to this girl? She, uh, she attempted to travel out of the country in, in July of last year. Where was she travelling? Uh, again, the, the, matter is, the, the matter is before court, and there's a number of those facts will be led through so the court process. She was stopped process. from travelling, though. She, she wasn't able to travel. She was stopped from travelling. So, your, uh, your, the arrest related just to this online communication? Uh, that's what we'll urge before court. Why does it take so long to make an arrest? Are you gathering more information and hoping that you'll find other people that she's communicating with? As uh, Deputy Commissioner Williams has stated, this has been an incredibly thorough investigation. These are complex matters. Uh, there's evidence that needs to be obtained, not just in Australia, but from, from overseas jurisdictions. Right through this process, we conducted regular th risk assessments in terms of her activity. And as the Deputy has stated, we're very comfortable that today is the right time to affect the arrest of this individual. Is it a coincidence that you've chosen today? Uh, a coincidence in relation to what? Uh, absolutely not. It's, uh, it's, but this, was, this has been planned for, for a number of days. Given that um, she was on your radar in July and stopped from travelling overseas, what was the reason you gave her then for um, stopping her from travelling overseas? And was she aware that she was on your radar from that point to obviously almost a year later? She, she's been aware that she's been on, on the radar of, of, of law enforcement authorities in Australia. So just to clarify, um, in terms of her coming to the attention of the police, mm. Was that through a lot of online activity? Was that from a tip off? You talked about you know, the importance of the public, uh, family and friends contacting. Her. I think her, her, her uh, our awareness in relation to her activities. The trigger point was her attempting to travel overseas, and, and from that stage, we've. Uh, conducted a, a number of lines of inquiries, both online and, and offline, with with various individuals. So that you, you first, she first came on your radar from her attempting to travel overseas, not before that. That's correct. And does she have to have links with Somalia in terms of family members and uh, friends? And uh, again. She's before court this afternoon, and, and you know there's got to be a court process that rules out over the next couple of months that a number of these issues will get raised through that process. Can you just clarify the timeline today? What time you arrived at her house? The time she was arrested? Where she was taken? Which police station? Uh, how long she's been held there for? Someone you have that one. Uh, she she was arrested this morning, and uh, she, uh, she was processed as normally processed. Deputy, do you have the details of the police station? Um. um 
The woman was arrested this morning. I won't go into the location of the arrest. She has been processed, and in my understanding that uh, she will now be here before the Adelaide Magistrates Court. I think that's sufficient detail to answer your question. Has she been charged at this point? The, in the processing, she will be subject to the charge. I can't tell you if it's actually happened in that processing, but that's the process that would unfold. She would be charged and then appear in court. Well, was she arrested at home? Yeah, was it at home? As I said, I'm not going to go into details of where the arrest occurred other than it occurred in Adelaide. Were there other people present and are you looking into those people? As I said, I'm not going into the circumstances of the arrest. She was arrested this morning uh, without incident and she's been processed through the system and she'll appear in the Adelaide Magistrates Court today. Is she at the City Watch House? I understand that with the process she will go through the watch house. If she's physically there right now, I can't tell you um, exactly. Was she employed uh, here in Australia? Did she have a job? Uh, I'm not privy to whether she was employed um, here in Australia at the, at the present time. I do have some understanding of that she was a student, but whether she was employed outside of that, I don't know. What was she studying? As I say, that's details that will come out in the court process at the moment. Who did she live with? Who, who, what other family? What family? These are matters that are before the court. That's going into the investigation at this point, so I'm not, I'm not inclined to answer Final that question. question. Is she married? Does she have children? As I say, this is matters before the court. The information that's there in terms of she's a 22-year-old woman, she resides in Adelaide, and she resided in the western suburbs. Is oh, really? Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Can we just ask the assistant commissioner on Manchester? Is there anything, any information? Do you want to go first, Deputy? Sure. Um, look, we, we know what you know in terms of there's been a dreadful incident that's occurred in Manchester. Um, obviously, overnight their time in the early hours of the morning our time. Um, I can't begin to understand or um, how the families will be affected by this incident. As you know, in the media, it hasn't been confirmed whether it's a terrorist incident or not, but Manchester Police are responding as if it is, which is an appropriate response, given the uncertainty of what they're facing. Um, there's no known link to the incident here today. But what I can say, uh, we do a lot of work in our community with um, uh, organisations where large, large crowds of people um, attend venues, whether it's concerts or other like sporting events. And you may be aware more recently in Adelaide we just conducted an exercise with the um, Adelaide Oval, which is a you know, crowded place. Um, in preparation we work extensively with our local partners, government and non-government, in terms of prevention and protecting our community and being as vigilant as we can, which today under, undermines or underlies and underscores the, the very work that we're doing in the prevention space. Did that terror exercise, is that related to the fact you had this woman under observation? No, it's not. We, uh, we're always uh, training and preparing and learning from our environment, whether it's here in Australia or internationally. So that's a constant part of us preparing for anything in the community. And it's not just preparing for counter-terrorism. It could be how we prepare for bushfires, similar experience, or how we prepare for severe weather events, which we've all seen recently. So it's part of our emergency management and counter-terrorism preparation. There's still no bylines outside of Adelaide. Is um, Adelaide prepared for a terror attack? Um, Adelaide Oval have put in treatments, as you're aware, in terms of um, other prevention strategies. Um, there are, there's been a significant amount of effort also in Rundle Mall in terms of preparation and bollards. Um, so the areas that have been um, risk, uh, risk assessed have taken uh, their necessary action. Um, look, at the end of the day, can you prepare for everything? Probably not, but what you can do is be as prepared as you possibly can within your means, and that's what we're trying to do. Will security measures be increased for large gatherings? Will security measures be increased for large gatherings in Adelaide or Australia uh, as a result of this? The ter current terrorism threat is at the same. It's that probable. Um, it, will, it will obviously be constantly being reassessed. Um, our level of preparedness is not changing. There's a significant level for our places of uh, mass gathering or crowded places, such as I said, concerts and sporting venues. Um, I'm sure the owners and operators of those businesses will reflect on what's happened overseas and they'll make some risk assessments and they'll decide whether they need to do more or not based on what's happening. That's a constant thing that the community is doing as, as situations change. Have we had Thank a close you. call, Deputy, with this arrest? Is this a close call? Is that how you describe it? A uh, close call. As I say, there was no immediate threat. So what we have done is we have prevented which I think is, is, I need to make that quite clear in this instance. Had there been a threat, as I've said before, the response would have been different, but there was no immediate threat. Sorry. Can I ask you about... 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 Can I ask you about